when we put it on the menu, we didn't think it was gonna sell. And we started ordering one goat and then it was like, okay, we need two goats this week and then we need five goats and we need six goats and we need seven goats. And they're just like, how much goat are you selling? I'm like, oh, clearly a lot. Like it's, we, we can never have enough goat in house. Hello everybody, my name is Nina Compton. I am from the island of St. Lucia, but I actually live in New Orleans. I have two restaurants, Buy What American Bistro and Compella Pen. And today I'll be making curry goat with sweet potato gnocchi and cashews. A dish that has really transformed the restaurant from a small neighborhood restaurant to this craziness of this curry goat. That was a dish that I grew up with in the Caribbean that is so simple. And I wanted to kind of elevate it a little bit differently instead of doing white rice. So we're doing it with sweet potato gnocchi. I hope you enjoy today. So we get the goat legs and we brine them overnight. A very important process for the primal parts of the animal because it basically infiltrates the muscle. So you have salt that is going from the outside of the muscle all the way through it. So it's seasoning the entire muscle. And then we're just gonna finish a little bit of a little more salt and pepper just to finish the surface as well. And then I just a little bit of olive oil. I like to roast this in the oven just to get a nice even sear on, on the protein because if you try and do it in a pan, it's not gonna roast as evenly. So we're gonna pop it in the oven. I do it about 400, 450 for about an hour just to make sure it has that nice even crust. Okay, so we're gonna start with the base of the curry. So we're gonna julienne these onions, and then we're going to cut fresh turmeric. The ginger is, again, very rustic, just chopped up. We're gonna throw the onions in. So yeah, we're just going to caramelize these nicely, and then we're gonna add a little bit of salt. And then we're gonna add the ginger as well, just to really sweat out the aromatic flavors of the ginger and the turmeric. Turmeric and ginger, like if somebody has a cold in the restaurant, I make like a tea with ginger, turmeric, I put honey, I put star anise, I put cloves, and you just sip on that with a fresh bay leaf, and I think it's better than NyQuil. And then I'm going to add a habanero, and I just tear it. I don't even chop it up. Sweating that out nicely. You can see the color starting to bleed out of the turmeric, starting to become nice and yellow. So while that's sauteing, we're going to make our sachet. And I just like to do a sachet because it keeps everything separate enough to pick it out at the end. Cinnamon sticks, star anise, clove, fresh curry leaves, and green cardamom. I'm just gonna tie this up. Again, just, just so the spices don't come out. And then we're gonna add garam masala, a traditional curry blend of cumin, black pepper, a little bit of clove, so it's pretty much reinforcing exactly what's in the sachet back into here. And then we're gonna add our sachet. So now that actually lends to the curry base. And then we're gonna add our chicken stock. So while this is uh, coming together and simmering nicely, we're gonna make our sweet potato gnocchi next. The sweet potatoes, they've been roasted at 350 degrees until nice and soft. And when you can tell, it's by pushing around and they're soft all the way. Take a fork and mash the potatoes, just until they're nice and smooth and there's no lumps. Gnocchi is something that I started doing later in my career. I worked for Scott Conant. You know, it's an Italian restaurant, so there's a lot of pastas. I've never really was trained on pasta, and that was, that was one of my first introductions to making fresh pasta with gnocchi. And I kind of just got a, a very um, quick quick lesson, and it's just something that I'm like, I enjoy making this. And I now I, I do agnolotti, I do spaghetti, I do shavatelli, I do all these different shapes. But that was like my intro to the pasta world, was, was gnocchi. So um, I think it's just a fun way to do it, and who doesn't love gnocchi? So why not? We are going to separate the eggs. And I just use egg yolks. The reason being just using egg yolks is you're adding less water and that way it's easier to control and you can actually add less flour just by using just yolks instead of whole eggs. We braise goat every single week. And every time it comes out of the oven, I just take a piece and I'm like, oh my God, it's so good. I just, I just love goat. And there's times where I say, I'm like, oh, we'll take it off the menu, we'll do something different. And I'm like, no, but it's such a, a different dish that you don't really see that often. It's such a big production. Everybody knows like Thursdays is the worst day to be scheduled. Like if you're scheduled off, everybody's like, yeah, I miss goat day. 
because every single oven is full of goats. The boxes just come with all this goat like stacked to the ceiling. And there's goat everywhere. But I mean, we've been doing it for four years, so we get used to it. So now we're just looking for almost like Play-Doh, where it's nice and soft, not too sticky, it's not too wet, and it all comes together in one mass. So we're gonna take it out here. We're just gonna finish the kneading process just ever so slightly. You really don't wanna overwork the dough, because then, then the gnocchi will be really, really hard. You want them to be nice and delicate, like little pillows. So now we're just going to cut these into little logs. And if you have, you know, little kids, they can definitely help you out because they'd love to get their hands nice and floury and messy. So now we're just gonna line these up and flour them. Then we're gonna cut them into about an inch. What I, I try and do when I make pasta now is I'll go in the back and just spend like a couple of hours making pasta, like listening to, you know, a couple podcasts. I love it, like just to be by myself, just doing my thing and nobody to bug me, like how long on the steak, chef? How long on this? It's just like, I can just take my time and you're making this little tortellini or you're making this little ravioli or whatever it is. It's like you're creating something with your own hands. So I think that for me is, is special. So now these are all set. We're going to put them into the fridge just to let them hang out and chill until we're ready to finish our ragu. Every Thursday. I think the most we got in was 400 pounds. Just baste the leg. Now we're going to pop it back into the oven. We're going to basically roast it and shallow braise it for about three hours at 350. And as we're doing that, we're going to basically baste the jus on top of the goat every half an hour and just rotate it so it's nicely coated and evenly cooked. So now we're gonna pull our goat. I think it's nice and tender. So now you can see the goat is very, very nice and tender. It's also a, a lot darker um, and that's just from the actual just braising of the meat. And you can also tell by it just naturally just falling off the bone with no resistance. I'm just gonna take the leg out and we're just gonna add the sachet back. I always look at the sachet as kind of a gift that keeps on giving. The more you use it, the more flavor you can extract from it. So we're just gonna strain all the spices out. Just gently tap everything through. And then we're gonna finish the, the jus now with a little bit of coconut milk. Just stirring so it's nice and creamy. And I like to cut the, the goat meat into one inch cubes when I add it back into the ragu because it holds up better and doesn't fall apart. And um, I think that when you have it that big, it eats a little more tender that way. So our jus has reduced for about half an hour. We took the sachet out, add the braised goat back into the jus gonna spread it out just so it gets nice and juicy again and refortified um, into everything. And while that is going on, we're going to poach our gnocchi. You gotta make sure the water is rapidly boiling. If it's not boiling, uh, your gnocchi will not poach properly and it will sink to the bottom and then break apart. And what we're looking for here is just for the gnocchi to float for about a minute and that lets you know that they are pretty much cooked all the way through. Just for a little bit of pop of acidity, we add tomatoes that we cut in half and we dehydrate in the oven. And then we're gonna add arugula. Arugula, I think for me, has this nice herbaceousness to lend itself to this dish. So as you can see, our gnocchi are, are floating. And once you add the gnocchi, you really don't want to stir um, with a spoon. You don't wanna break them up. And just finish the last minute or so poaching it in the liquid, just so it absorbs the flavor as well. I think for me that the green cardamom and the fresh curry leaves just have this, this floral aroma that it's, it's, it just gets you when you smell it. When I started cooking Caribbean food you know, at, at the restaurant, I kind of did a lot of history lessons tracing back the origin of curry and I looked at all the different spices because most people in the Caribbean they just buy the pre-made curry spices and I said what's really in curry spice? It's the turmeric, it's the ginger, it's the onions, it's the cardamom, it's the curry leaves and when you get those things fresh and individual it's, I think it's so much more special. This is pretty much me on a plate you know coming from the Caribbean but also all the chefs I worked under for a long time. 
you want to make sure you get a little bit of everything. So you get the tomatoes, the arugula, the goat, all nicely just distributed in the plate. And then we're just going to finish with chopped cashews. I just like to add that just because it has a little bit of texture to it, um, a nice little crunch. So now I'm going to try the gnocchi and the curry goat. It's one of those dishes that, again, I can never get tired of. It's something I grew up with. So when you try this dish, um, just try a little bit of the broth first, just to get you know, your feet wet, essentially. And then you dive in for the big bite. Mm. It's so complex, you get all the spices and you get this nice goat flavor that basically goes right through the sauce, that creamy coconut sauce. Then you have the texture of the cashews and then you have that nice creamy gnocchi. So that is our curry goat with sweet potato gnocchi and cashews. And for the recipe, click the link and the description.